Canada is caught between China and U.S., and feeling alone. Toronto, first President Donald Trump attacked Canada on trade. Then. Now China has the country in its crosshairs, for the arrest of a top Chinese tech executive on behalf of the United States. Canada is caught between two superpowers in taking the punishment, and its ally to the south has been conspicuously absent in coming to its aid. We've never been this alone, historian Robert Bothwell said. We don't have any serious allies. And I think that's another factor in what the Chinese are doing, our means of retaliation are very few. China is a hostile power. The two Canadians, Michael Kovrig, a former diplomat in China, and Michael Spaver, an entrepreneur who lived in northeastern China near the North Korean border, were taken into custody Monday on suspicion of engaging in activities that endanger the national security of China, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Liu Kang said. Canadian consular officials have had no access to them. Their detentions ratchet up pressure on Canada, which arrested Meng Wanzhou, the chief financial officer of telecommunications giant Huawei, on December 1 at the request of the United States. The U.S. wants her extradited to face charges that she and her company misled banks about the company's business dealings in Iran. A Canadian judge. The case has set off a among the three nations in which Canada has been stuck in the middle. Until now, Canada had a largely good relationship with China, forged by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's father, late Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, who helped establish the One China formula that enabled many other countries to recognize China in the 1970s. Canada acknowledged there is one government of China and does not officially recognize Taiwan. China has since become Canada's second largest trading partner, after the United States. Chinese investment has powered real estate booms in Vancouver and Toronto. And one-third of foreign students in Canada are Chinese. Justin Trudeau has even talked about a possible free trade agreement with China in a bid to diversify Canada's trade, which relies on the U.S. for 75 percent of its exports. But the Canadian Prime Minister has said little since news of this week's arrests became public. Opposition Conservative leader Andrew Scheer said Trudeau isn't being forceful enough with the Chinese. This situation demonstrates that Justin Trudeau's naive approach to relations with China isn't working, Scheer said. It's Canada's second dispute with a major power this year. In June, Trump vowed to make Canada pay after Trudeau said he wouldn't be pushed around in talks to hammer out a new North American trade agreement an unprecedented attack on America's closest ally, words that shocked Canadians. Then Trump said this week that he might intervene in the Huawei case if it would help clinch a trade agreement with China, upending U.S. efforts to separate the court proceeding from U.S.-China trade talks and contradicting Canadian officials who said the arrest was not political. Canadian Foreign Minister Christia Freeland took a swipe at Trump, saying it was quite obvious any foreign country requesting extradition should ensure the process is not politicized. Normally. Canada can count on the United States to back them up on such an issue, said Laura Dawson, a former economic advisor at the U.S. Embassy in Ottawa and director of the Canada Institute at the Wilson Center think tank in Washington. Dawson said it's unusual for Washington to leave Canada hanging high and dry. President Trump has made it clear that old alliances don't matter so much anymore, she said. He has made no secret of his preference for a go-it-alone approach and his lack of regard for traditional alliances.